Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Weir, and I gotta tell you, I love life. But when I'm not being a husband, a father, a grandfather, an author, or a practicing chiropractor, I'm the host of the television show, Loving Life with Dr. Tim Weir. I love to cook. I love to travel. I like to spend time with people who do what they love and love what they do. Join me and Elvis for the next 30 minutes as we help you discover how to love life. You know how I love creativity and the ability to create things. And my guest today with me is David Baroni, incredible musician, songwriter, preacher, all of it, author. Oh, stop. Oh, stop. <laughs> it's good to be with you. Thank you for being with me. Tell me a little bit about yourself. You, you do all this stuff. Well, I was born and raised in Natchez, Mississippi, and uh, I grew up going to church. I knew about the Lord, but I didn't really have a relationship with God. Make a long story short, I tried to fill up the emptiness in my life with music. Started on the basketball team in high school. It was a small school. And uh, <laughs> I read a lot of books, and as I got a little older as a teenager, I experimented with drugs. and just looking for something, actually someone, to fill the emptiness in my life. Mm -hmm. I went to college, majored in jazz music, graduated after only one year, some people call it quitting, and uh, I got in this uh, band that traveled around the country, and outwardly was a success, but inwardly I was, I was still miserable. I ended up working at a recording studio, Muscle Shoals, Alabama, yeah. fame studios, mm -hmm. and uh, lots of well-known people had recorded there and I was a session player and um, walked around the corner one day to a KFC restaurant and I found God in KFC. Wow. He was working there through a, a young lady that really had a relationship with the Lord. So she prayed for me for three reasons. Number one, she knew that I needed to know the love of God. Number two, she kind of liked me and she didn't want to go out with an unbeliever as we say. She didn't want to date no heathen. <laughs> And uh, thirdly, most dangerous of all, she was the youth choir director, and they needed a new piano player for wow. the youth choir. So she had to clean you up fast. Yeah, she did. And uh, that uh, that young lady introduced me to a real relationship with God, and uh, she's been my wife now of going on 34 years. Wow! Congratulations. So uh, her name is Rita, and uh, she's the love of my life. And so I've been traveling uh, full time since. Uh, a long time ago, since our oldest daughter was just uh, three weeks old, and uh, we've ministered and sung in uh, 30 countries and, and almost every Isn't that state. amazing? Yeah, and very grateful to get to share music and grateful to be here with you today. Oh, thank you. Now, in writing songs, I was talking to somebody the other day, and it is, it is truly a gift. Because there are some people who, who are just totally tone deaf and couldn't even write the words down. But it's a gift to be able to, to hear it and then to write it. And that's really what it is. My friend Morris Chapman, who's a wonderful songwriter and a, a mentor of mine, calls it not songwriter, but song receiver. Mm. And uh, so it really is. You, you hit it right. It's just hearing. Obviously, there are things about the craft of songwriting. Uh, making sure the lyrics fit together with the music and, and those kind of things. But basically, some of my best songs have just come uh, spontaneously. It's mm -hmm. like taking heavenly dictation. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to demean the craft process because I've been writing songs for a long time and hopefully I've improved. Sure. But the bottom line is I, I believe there's a, a river of creativity that flows. And that's the same in the arts, that's the same, I think, in business. Oh, absolutely. And, and so accessing that river and letting that river flow through you is, is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And that's what I, I try to do. It's a wonderful thing. So I'd like to hear a song. Sure. Can we do that? Yes, be glad to. Okay. my arms, the wind in my face, 
Just watching the world go by Then I grew up The fairy tale ended I found myself back on the ground But lately I'm thinking About the dreams I was dreaming And I won't let life keep me down I'm gonna fly Fly like an eagle Soar above the storm Fly Breathless and fearless It's what I'm created for To spread my wings Catch the sky And fly Now pain has a way of clipping our wings And keeping us out of the sky Sometimes we forget If just for a moment That we were created to fly Oh, but just like a child We can remember The dream that once was so real And then a voice tells us There's still hope inside us And nothing can stop what we feel When we fly It's what we're created for To spread our wings Catch the sky And fly Further than we can imagine and fearless it's what we're created for to spread our wings live our dreams catch the sky and fly Uptown Pictures is a full-service script-to-screen production company which can help you create the proper messaging for any number of applications with spacious state-of-the-art studio offering green screen, mocap and practical stages along with a team of professionals who will make you and your business shine. So what are you waiting for? Call us at 919-649-3587 and schedule your appointment today. 
It's time we put your imagination into motion. phenomenal group of guys building 429. I want to know where in the world this name came from. Mm. That's a good All question. Right. Go ahead, Mike. All Go. right. It comes from Ephesians 429 in the Bible, which says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, except that which is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So it's kind of I think you've said statement. that before. I have. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the worst. Yeah. We know it. That's the number one question we've ever been asked right, right there. But it, that's, that's we should have come up with something uh, else. Uh, something, uh, creative. something more creative. But, but you know what I, I, I do want to know is, uh, because I, I, I love talking to people who, who are doing what they love and love what they're doing. Otherwise you go through life hating life and what you do. How did you guys get into doing, doing this? Well, I mean, the first part of it was that we absolutely loved it. Um, we had just big dreams. God put dreams in our hearts that someday we'd be able to play on stages with bands like Third Day, and DC Talk, and stuff like that. Yeah. You know? and, and, um, and it didn't really matter. The money side of it was never something that we ever even considered. I mean, for us, we just love playing music, love being a band, love going out and having It's not a, a bad time. thing, though. The and money. so we kind of were shocked when we jumped into it and realized we could actually make a living out, out of it. And God's just been faithful. And through the years, for the last 12 years, we've been a band on the road playing all over the world. And um, we love it more than we ever have before, mostly because our relationships yeah. are, are what we focused on. Yeah. I love doing it every single day. It's amazing. Out of all the songs that you do, yeah, favorites. Yes, that's oh, easy that for me. It's probably all I the think, same. Or maybe all Go different. Ahead. I, don't know. I think mine's gonna be different. Mine's a song called "Listen to the Sound." So. Oh wow, yeah, it's different. Yeah, so it kind of has. I live at the beach actually in North Carolina, Moorhead City, yeah. Beach. So it kind of has this beachy feel to it, and it's just kind of my thing. So that's my favorite. A little one. bit of Calabash. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, honestly, for me, it's where I belong. I mean, I just every it's time we song. play that song, we get to stop and hear the crowd sing. And I think a long time ago, we kind of figured out that we didn't want to play songs that people would applaud at the end. We wanted people, we wanted to play songs that people would sing with us during the song. Instead right. of people coming and showing up to watch us, how about they just show up to be a part of what we're doing? Where I belong is kind of that, the ultimate of that effort. Are you guys always this quiet? Uh, actually, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's, I know, I'm talking a lot more than I usually <laughs> actually, do. Really? Yeah. yeah. Really, it's yeah, amazing. We're kind of switching it up on you. Yeah. Cool. I'm feeling good. He's, he's at home, so you know, he's feeling yeah, good. I, I answer he's... all the Spanish questions. <laughs> Yo quiero. Hey. That was a hey, good start. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I, uh, the only part I know is Taco Bell at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't help you with that. So I understand you, you now, next month you're going to be with uh, Toby Mac, is that right? Are you guys going to be at, at the beach? No, no. We're not Would gonna... you like to be at the you beach? You know what? I'll oh, tell you. Power. I want to see these guys at the beach. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Uh, to actually, Toby's good friends with us. Yeah, okay. uh, he's actually one of my basketball buddies back home, back in Tennessee. We play ball together, and uh, we love playing with him. We're actually um, working right now on a tour, though, in the fall with a band called the Newsboys. So that's kind of the big news right now. And we're getting on a plane uh, next Tuesday to go to Europe for uh, a wow. big ride. So staying busy, man. Staying at it. That's what success is all about. <laughs> and it's cool to be successful. To do what you love, love what you do, and succeed doing what you're doing, and seeing people. And it's hard work. Yeah, and oh, absolutely. It's, it's hard work. It just happens that we love it, you know what I mean? And so, so when you find something that you love and that the money was never really what your primary reason for getting into it, it makes it so much easier to go out there and sweat and, and, and work hard for it. So, yeah, we play 150 sh shows to 200 shows a year. We've done that for 10 years. It's a lot of work, but, man, we absolutely love doing it. I can't imagine really doing anything else. You know, I, I found that people who chase the money don't make the money, but people who do what they love to do make the money, and that's cool. That's an, and that's what the Bible says you should be able to do. Workman is worthy of his hire. So good job. Evidently, you're doing a good job. Success isn't necessarily monetary. It's you exactly. doing something you love and yeah. successful. Yeah. Well, you guys are awesome. Vacation every day of your life, right? Yeah. <laughs> Never work a day.
Good never work today. Yeah. Thank you for being on the show with me. It's good to meet you. Hey, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't, don't move, we'll be right back. Uptone Pictures is a full-service script-to-screen production company which can help you create the proper messaging for any number of applications with spacious state-of-the-art studio offering green screen, mocap and practical stages along with a team of professionals who will make you and your business shine. So what are you waiting for? Call us at 919-649-3587 and schedule your appointment today. It's time we put your imagination into motion. If you've been around music for any time, you're going to know my next guests. They literally have defined Christian music as to what it is today. And so I'm with the Imperials. And so let's see what they've got to say about life. Hey, guys. Hey, Hello. how you doing, Tim? Life is I'm good. glad. Glad you're, you're here with me today. Life is good, isn't it? Yes. Tell me a little bit about where it all started with the Imperials. Everybody looks at Armand. Yeah, he's the oldest. <laughs> in 1964, a gentleman named Jake Hess, who was with the Statesman Quartet at that particular yeah. time, came to him with an idea of putting the four best voices he considered to be the best voices in Southern Gospel music together to form a premier group. And so we went through a lot of names and ended up with Cheryl Nielsen, myself, Henry Slaughter, and Gary McSpadden, wow. and Jake. And that was the formation. Yeah, was awesome. And two years later, it actually happened. So uh, it was quite a thing. We practiced for, Lord of Mercy, three months every day. And uh, everything was so perfect, it was almost un unhuman. Yeah, <laughs> it was. So you guys stepped out of where you were, yes. in the comfort of where you were, into this new oh, venture. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was exciting, very exciting, because the group sounded great. People wanted to know what these four men would sound like together after seeing them with other groups wow. for so many years. Now, I imagine it caused quite a stir. Oh yeah, it caused quite a stir. I, I was in college when the group came to uh, right. Minneapolis. And uh, I remember I said, man, the Imperials are coming. I gotta go to a concert. So we That's did. Right. We saw you at a Catholic school. Wow. And it was wow. uh, Jake and Gary and Armin and I think Jim Andy. Jim was with you at the time. Yeah, Jim was probably. Like yeah. Cheryl was here about a, Jim about a year. Yeah, and yeah. And Jim Murray came on. Yep. Which I feel was one of the greatest tenors of all time. Unbelievable, mm -hmm. unbelievable. Now, you started there, and then through the years, it's just evolved into. Well, Jake uh, had a lot of health issues, and uh, we had our offices in RCA Studios down downtown Nashville, and. He said, you know, I just can't take the road. It's just really physically uh, bothering me. And so he let us know within a six months he was gonna move on. And so we replaced him with Terry Blackwood. And uh, 
Mm -hmm. Also changed the style of music at the same time, gradually going to more a pop style. Yeah. What they call contemporary and a pop style with Christian lyrics. Now, uh, I would imagine that caused quite a stir. Well, oh, yeah. out of the <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. that happened two or three times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, uh, so many of the uh, the old hymns that we sing now caused a stir when they came into yeah. to being too. So now um, w we go from that point then into let's say the 70s. Is, is that when Terry came in? Terry and uh, a major, major move was when Sherman Andrews came in, a uh, black guy, first black guy to be in a yeah. Yeah. white group. And another stir was happening. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it turned out, it could have been really bad or it could have been disastrous actually. Sure. And uh, the record company felt like it was a great move. And of course, Sherman's a great singer. So he brought a style and a rhythm really of the black move. Yeah. That, uh, kind of combined with what we already had going. And uh, the secret was really good material, that we mm -hmm. the right material. So basically you've been from day one. Oh yeah. Arm is the only original member. And then who came in, which one of you guys came in next? I came in 76, right after the Elvis era. Okay. And uh, I went to an Imperial concert again. I remember that, Dave. You, yeah. you were in... Uh, Newcastle, Cap Pennsylvania. Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Really? And, and the I, promoter spot, spotted me in the back and I had written a song and he called me up to sing uh, around halftime and Armin was standing off the side and he grabbed me and when I was going off he said, because uh, he knew that Terry was probably going to leave. told me that his father yeah. had passed away through an accident and he needed to be off the road for a year or more and so I was looking for a replacement. Mm. And I actually, Dave, I went back to the back of the auditorium under the balcony in the mm -hmm. dark which I never do, and just sat there and was praying about somebody, and I heard David, and I said, and the Lord told me, he said, that's the guy. Wow. I mean, just as clear as can be. So it was a God thing oh, that absolutely. night. Yeah, because I'm amazing. I, mm -hmm. And then, Rick, you came in. I came in 2005 the second time. The first yeah, time I came yeah. to the group uh, was about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I came and auditioned, flew out here, bought a house, Yep. And uh, before I auditioned, I bought a house and that was an amazing story, right? met Armin and showed him the house. And uh, he called his wife and said, uh, we got a crazy guy here. Yeah. He bought a house. So, <laughs> He's already bought a house. And, and uh, I went to the audition. I thought it went pretty well. Got Walked into the room and Dave was there and everybody was there and getting the big thumbs up. And all I remember is Armin coming in going, Rick, uh, I think you did a good job, but, and then after yeah. that, I don't remember anything, but I was in a car on the way back to the airport. And yeah. through that, we really formed a great friendship. Yeah. And so you forget about how you have maybe touched somebody in some way. I remember singing one place where a lady came up to me. She said, I used to be a call girl for the mafia. <laughs> and I, I was like a little taken back. She said, yeah. She said, my, my girlfriend's invited me to an Imperial concert. She said, I thought I was going to see little Anthony in the Imperial. So she said, I went that night. She said, the invitation was given and I accepted the Lord. And she said, you see that man standing over there? That's my husband, he's an evangelist and we travel now and preach the gospel. Mm. So it's those kind of experiences to me that are, oh, absolutely. are the kind of thing that's fulfilling yeah. because you were obedient, even though you didn't know you were touching somebody's life and then you know, uh, I don't think about those kinds of things very often, but when I hear them back, I say, I'm just glad I was faithful to God right. and did His work. Right. Yeah, and that, that's all that really matters. Because that's the only thing you can take to heaven is yeah. the people's lives that you've touched. That's true. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for being here with me. We enjoyed it very much. Yeah, we good. My name is Anita. I was in an accident with whiplash 
medium and lower back pain, and I came to Raleigh Injury Chiropractic, and I believe it was the best thing I ever done. The staff here is wonderful. Dr. Weir is great. You might couldn't ask for nothing else better in Raleigh, and I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad to maintain my health. Hey, I'm Dr. Tim Weir. If you want results like Anita, call our office today, 919-790-1332. Call right now. Uptown Pictures is a full-service script-to-screen production company which can help you create the proper messaging for any number of applications with spacious state-of-the-art studio offering green screen, mocap, and practical stages along with a team of professionals who will make you and your business shine. So what are you waiting for? Call us at 919-649-3587 and schedule your appointment today. It's time we put your imagination into motion. Hi, this is Dr. Tim Weir. I treat hundreds of patients every year who've been injured in car accidents, and a lot of those could be avoided. The National Safety Council reports that cell phone use while driving leads to 1.6 million crashes each year. That's one out of four accidents. Do yourself a favor, and if you get a text while you're driving, ignore it. And getting a carton of milk isn't going to do any good if you're dead. Drive safe. Keep loving life. I want you to stay connected to us. You know, we have a website, drtimweir.com. That'll actually take you to some of our other things like Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook. Those are all things that we can all stay connected together. It's, it, you, it's different than it used to be. You know, you used to get newsletters and you used to get postcards from people. That's all changing. We're all in social media now, but I, I, and I want you to stay up with that. It's important that you do that. So join our Facebook page, join our Twitter account, Instagram, uh, but go to our website, drtimweir.com, because it'll kind of all put it together for you. It's been great being with you. I love being here with you. It's all about loving life, sharing this incredible thing we have called life. And listen, your life is what you make it. You create it. So if it stinks, you better figure out a new way to create it and do some different stuff. And I'd love to help you with that. Drop me a line, you can do that on the website. I'd love to hear that you're hearing what I've got to say. So until next time, keep loving life. As long as there is time and one breath left in me, there will always be one more song for you. And as long as there is room for one more voice in praise and a need for a word of love and truth. To help my brother through, there'll be one.